Hello and welcome to the first lecture of the Digestive System for Biology 2402 lecture. It sounds very exciting right now. We'll see what happens in about 15 slides. Uh, all right, just overall look here. Um, you can call your digestive system any of these terms and be equally accurate. Uh, an animal's gut is a common term that you use to describe a, a, the digestive system. With us in particular, or you know, a lot of animals, we've got a flow through one. We've got a tube that starts at one end, and that's where you put stuff in, and then it goes all the way through, and at the other end, you get rid of stuff you don't want. That's not the same for all animals. Some animals only have one opening, and they'll take food in, and, and then uh, once it's digested, they'll reject it back out the same opening. But we've got a tube, so you can call it an alimentary canal or a gastrointestinal tract. Uh, this may be a term, the GI tract. You've probably heard that. But digestive system works too. Uh, what do we got? Uh, four, one, two, three, no, six major uh, steps of digestion. And here they are listed. Uh, they're not necessarily in order. So even though you always ingest first and you always defecate last, the stuff in the middle is happening all along. So absorption, you can see the stuff in orange down here. It's You're absorbing through lots of steps of your small intestine. You're propelling it. You're doing propulsion the whole way through. Mechanical breakdown, you do start that in your mouth. You carry it on in your stomach. You even do it here in the, uh, in the small intestine. Absorption uh, occurs at various spots. Actually, it doesn't show you, but you can absorb stuff through your mouth. That's just doesn't usually spend enough time there to be of any use. Uh, this interesting bit here, segmentation, is kind of like a back and forth breakup of the food in the small intestine and it kind of occurs along with propulsion to keep that food moving and mixed. All right, now you've seen these layers before, these uh, serous layers, right? So if this right here, this thing right in the center of this image on the right is your digestive tract. So this will be your, your stomach or your intestine or whatever it is, and your esophagus. Around it are serous layers. And there is a parietal layer, which lines the body wall, and a visceral layer, which lines the tube itself. For the digestive system organs, they call that the peritoneum. So, whereas for the uh, heart, it was pericardium, for whereas for the, the lungs, it was pleury, uh, here it is peritoneum. So, visceral peritoneum wraps around the, the organ, and the parietal peritoneum lines the inside of the body wall. And in between lies peritoneal fluid. So, if you punched a hole in your body wall uh, and got to the space between your abs and your intestines, there would be a space there and it would have a fluid in it. All right, these are the four layers or tunics or whatever of the digestive system organs. And they're on the next page. And I'll try to get the PowerPoint to go to the next page. Go PowerPoint, there it is. So you can just refer to these in the in the power PowerPoints. And here they are from the outside. In you've got uh, basically a serosa on the outside, muscularis externa, which is the smooth, mu smooth muscle, submucosal layer, which produces a lot of the secretions, and then mucosa, which lines the inside of the tube. That's from outside in, from inside out. It goes like this, and here's some important uh, descriptors for each of these which you can feel free to read yourself. Uh, the lamina propria is the name for the layer that lies just deep, I guess, to the, uh, the epithelial layer. And this is the layer through which uh, you get a lot of blood and nerves and you get some lymphatic tissue. So lamina propria would be like right in here. You can see that kind of connective tissue layer with the stuff in it. You're not gonna have to identify it in lecture. But this is a useful image for when we get to lab and you get a lot of photographs and pictures you have to identify. So uh, you can see that the mucosal layer has its own thin little layer of muscle which helps kind of squish food around a little bit, make the, uh, the mucosa active. Some mucosa lies beneath that and here lots of supply. If you look at the image, submucosa has a, a real thick connective tissue layer, right? And lots of blood vessels going in there. Muscularis externa, this is a uh, two smooth muscle layers, and you can see that there's a circular layer. If you can look at these 
fibers going like this, circular layers on the inside, longitudinal layers on the outside. And what this lets you do is when you contract these circular muscles, the tube gets thinner. When you contract the longitudinal muscles, the tube gets shorter and fatter. So you can kind of squeeze the tube down to a narrow diameter or squeeze the length of it and it'll kind of puff it up. So you can really mush that food around in your gut while you digest it. Lastly, the serous layer, which uh, is another connective tissue layer primarily, and uh, this is where you get the in route. This is the part that connects to the mesentery, connects to the uh, uh, surrounding uh, body wall and other tissues. Lastly, uh, for this screencast, uh, the splanchnic circulation is how you get blood into the, uh, into the digestive system and it comes from aortic branches that occur at spots down there. You remember the celiac trunk and the uh, superior mesenteric and all those. You don't have to know them right now, but that's what they were learned for. At rest, you're getting about a quarter of your heart's output goes to your digestive system, but if you eat, it's gonna go up uh, considerably. And the name of the specific branch of the nervous, nervous system that supplies your digestive system is called the enteric nervous system. And uh, that's about all I'll say about that. I'll pick up here on the next screencast.